Before we start this video, please make sure that you're still subscribed to the channel because YouTube keeps on subscribing you guys and I don't know why they're doing that. I would also like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to all of the new members in the channel. And if you haven't done so yet and would like to get some neat member perks, go ahead and press the join button. Go ahead and do the YouTube things. <laughs> Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> this is the second part of the readings of the plaintiff response to defendant's motion for status conference. In this video, we're going to be reading the declaration of Ilana R. Levine and the declaration from Natalie Kennett. But before we start, do not forget to go down below and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell button so you can get notified every time I post. Also, as a quick disclaimer, I just want to remind you guys that everything we discuss here in the channel is my opinion and my opinion only not to be taken as a fact. Always do additional research from the information that you get here in the channel. Do not send any hate to the people that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Am I right? fellow adult. However, I do encourage all of you to go in the comment section and let me know what do you think about the situation. So let's start the video by reading the declaration of Ilana R. Levine. As per my understanding, Ilana is in Mr. Salt's team. Mr. Salt is the attorney for Tati Westbrook, Halo Beauty, and James Westbrook on the lawsuit against AD Joy without a crystal ball. She starts by identifying herself belonging to Mr. Salt's legal team for the plaintiffs Tatiana Westbrook, James Westbrook, and Halo Beauty beauty partners and she also states that she's over the age of 18. She states that the case arose because of the defendant's publication of false statements in articles like Athios.com, over 80 videos on YouTube and Instagram, and hundreds of social media postings malignant Tati, James, and Halo Beauty. She also talks about the fact that Katie accused James of turning off the oxygen on his mother, although there is no documentation to prove her claims. Amongst other things that have been identified in the complaint of October 30th, 2020. Ilana further declares that since the filing of the complaint October 30, 2020, defendants have attempted to divert public attention to the attorneys and have been making numerous public comments about the case for the purpose of creating prejudice to the plaintiffs who have not made any statements on the case. And we already mentioned that on my last video. Just as a quick reference, this is Tati's YouTube channel where the last time she posted was seven months ago and it was the breaking my silence video. On Twitter, her last subtweet was June 24, 2020. The complaint for the defamation lawsuit was filed October 30, 2020. And on her Instagram, there's like some selfies and some photos of her and her husband, but nothing about the lawsuit either. She calls attention to Exhibit 1, which is a sampling of unsolicited social media postings that the defendants have made regarding to this case since the filing of the lawsuit and additional social media posts. She mentions also that some of these may have been deleted or hidden, and they also can provide those to the court upon request. So this is exhibit one. They basically transcribed everything that she has ever posted about the lawsuit that they could get their hands on. Obviously, that might not be everything because as we already know, she deletes and hides things. But if you want to take a look and read this, feel free to pause and do so. Here's a fucking list. Eleanor also makes notice of Exhibit 2, which is an index of sampling of YouTube videos which defendants have discussed the case either directly or indirectly since the filing. On this sampling, they give the dates of the videos, the title of the videos, and a short description of what was the overall theme of the video, and sometimes even at what minute Within the video, Katie starts talking about the lawsuit. This is a three-page sampling, and if you would like to give it a read, go ahead and press pause. I have all three pages here available for you. None of this would have come up if Brown hadn't filed that other declaration. On this next part, she states that based on the tweet that Katie Joy posted saying, email communications go both ways, trust me, just like I'm being watched, so are you. We know everything. This is age like, this is not even age like milk. Paired with all of the other hacking and attempt hacking events, Ilana declares that this tweet also led her to believe that the defendants were implying that they had access to either the firm's emails or the client's emails. She moves on to also mention about the attempts to gain entry into the Google and Twitter accounts of Mr. Saltz. She also mentions that at no time she believes that Mr. Saltz was publicly accusing Ms. Paulson of being the person attempting to hack into his accounts. 
And this is when things start getting a little more interesting. Approximately an hour later, on on or about January 17, 2021, defendants tweeted that they too had been the victim of a hacking attempt. Defendants included screenshots to demonstrate reported hackers' attempt to which they were referring. However, the screenshots show that the defendant's email was not actually being hacked. Rather, the defendant's email address was being used to 1. Set up a recovery email address for Natalie Kennett's email account and 2. Order and receive an archive of Ms. Kennett's emails. As such, rather than putting forth evidence of being hacked, Ms. Poulsen actually put forward evidence that she was receiving the benefit and bounty of our witness being hacked. And this makes a lot of sense. Now you can see the screenshots that they posted right here. But if you remember on my video, I did mention that there was a little note saying that your account without a crystal ball 78 at Gmail is listed as the recovery email for Nat2012 angel at gmail.com and at the time i thought it was the other way around i thought nat was actually going after kj but reading this again that the account without a crystal ball is listed as the recovery email it makes a lot more sense that the without a crystal ball account is the one coming after the nat account elena moves on to talk about the fake complaint from findlaw.com where mr brown sent both of them salts and elena an email warning them about this fake complaint and he also stated that the phone number was not KJ's. Elena declares that she decided to review the phone number from this fake find law complaint and discovered that the phone number listed was actually a number associated with without a crystal ball in Minnesota and or KJ and or her husband. Next, she moves on to address the January 18 tweets that were consistent with that to Mr. Saltz and some of plaintiff's counsel. In support of Michael Saltz's declaration, she claims that Michael Saltz reached out to Mr. Brown to try to get this resolved, but he did not respond. Instead, he filed the paperwork for the request of status conference. Elena notes that she had reviewed Mr. Brown's declaration and she mentions that his declaration has incorrect and or misleading statements. Mr. Brown stated below is a screenshot from a video on a YouTube channel that Mr. Salt has promoted on his Twitter account. However, the screenshot reference does not constitute evidence of a video promoted by Mr. Salt. Additionally, I have conducted a comprehensive search on Mr. Salt's Twitter page and found no evidence that Mr. Salt has promoted this video or any other video from any other YouTube creator regarding any videos associated with this case or the parties in this case. This is a screenshot that Mr. Brown added to his declaration, which does not show any kind of promotion from Mr. Salt. Clearly, this is just a screenshot from one of Emily D. Baker's videos discussing the paperwork on this lawsuit. I also found a subtweet from Michael Salt in November 7, 2020, saying Happy Saturday, where they were watching Emily D. Baker's videos. However, nowhere on this tweet he is promoting the creator. In another tweet from Michael Saltz, he states, I watched a lot of YouTube videos for the case and have made personal observations unrelated to the case or the veracity of the content in the videos. Emily D. Baker is wicked smart, Death Noodles is extremely witty, and Sherelle is adorable. Nick and Dustin are also very entertaining. Again, here in this tweet, he's not giving any kind of professional opinion. He's giving a personal opinion and clearly he's not promoting anyone particularly. Mr. Brown stated, below are screenshots of just a few of the tweets Mr. Salt has posted to publicly accuse Ms. KJ of the crime of hacking. In the screenshots directly below the statement, Mr. Salt does not publicly accuse anyone of hacking. Instead, the screenshot specifically states that it is directed at whomever attempted the hacking used a familiar email address in the hacking efforts. The next two screenshots on page 7 of Mr. Brown's declaration do not accuse Ms. KJ of hacking, or rather memorialize Mr. Salt's efforts to list Ms. KJ as a potential victim of the hacking attempts in a report to the authorities and the court. The two tweets she's mentioning are here. One of them is Mr. Salt answering somebody's tweet saying, what post? I will need that for our report to the authorities 
Ellis and the court. And then the next tweet is from KJ saying, why are you hacking my Gmail and trying to get into my YouTube account? These people are trying to hack my YouTube at Team YouTube. She moves on to page eight of Mr. Brown's declaration where there's a screenshot that also does not try to accuse Miss KJ of the hacking crime. Rather, it is a screenshot of Mr. Salt spotting and uncovering one of the hackers' accounts harassing Mr. Saltz and others. The hackers actually admitted in a tweet the next day that the God is great account Mr. Saltz was confronting belonged to them. And here's a tweet from the page eight of Mr. Brown's declaration. It, it's again a reply from Mr. Saltz to somebody saying God is great, which is the person that he's replying to. Thank you for reaching out. Is it true your account was created at the same time as the other harassing sock account surrounding this hacking issue? And that that your account exists to support KJ and attack her detractors. Your four day story is very interesting. So he's trying to get information and see if KJ is involved, but I don't see him here actually accusing her. Elena added to her declaration a screenshot from the account Penny Fierce 3 that says, my account, Chloe's account, God is great, are all KJ. She has many more accounts with real people behind them, but they are here, sock emails. She has someone, one called Jesse, that can place anyone at a specific IP address. Jesse, huh? She also directs the attention of the court to exhibits A through C on Brown's declaration, where Brown implies Saltz was trying to accuse Miss Paulson of the crime of hacking, and that Saltz was demanding an explanation from Brown about his involvement on the situation. Ilana declares that those statements are false and misleading. Mr. Brown does not provide an entire mail trail between counsel to the court. Nowhere in said email trail does it say that Mr. Saltz directly accused Miss KJ of federal crimes. Following are the three emails, exhibit A through C. We already read these emails at least twice throughout the videos following the KJ situation. If you want to read the emails now, press pause and do so. And she also notes that in exhibit one of Michael Salt's declaration, these three same emails that Michael Brown has posted on his declaration exist, plus several more, which are the ones that she's referring to Mr. Brown hiding them from the court, allegedly hiding them. And on the part one of this video series, I read all of those emails. So if you wanna go ahead and go to part one, I will leave the link for it down below in the description box, but finish this video first, please. Or just come back whenever you're done with that one. She also mentions that in no moment herself or her co-counsel have made any idle threats of criminal prosecution in order to gain any advantage in the litigation. Instead, Mr. Saltz informed Mr. Brown that they had a forensic expert working on to track down the hackers who were making that to the council and witnesses, which are serious crimes, and I definitely agree with her. Specifically, Mr. Saltz stated in January 18, 2021, we are in the process of providing all of this information to the federal authorities and will be pressing charges once we determine who are involved in the hacking attempts and the witness tampering. At no time, Mr. Saltz asserts that Ms. KJ and Mr. Brown are identified in the all who are involved in the hacking attempts and the witness tampering. On January 20, 2021, Mr. Brown sent another email indicating Ms. KJ received another reported notice from Google of another hacking attempt through her email address on Mr. Saltz and that it was not being done by defendants. Mr. Saltz, having recognized that the email Ms. KJ received was a fake phishing email, immediately requested the raw email instead of the screenshot so that the plaintiff's counsel could track the email's origins and any malicious coding therein. To date, Mr. Brown has not responded in any manner to this request. Here's the email reply from Brown to Saltz about the fact that somebody was trying to get a verification code and change the recovery email from Mr. Saltz to another account. Katie did not do this. The attempts to attach her email to other accounts without her knowledge or permission has continued. About 10 minutes later, Saltz responds saying, Mr. Brown, the email is most likely not genuine. Do not click any links on it. Doing so will likely download spyware into any computer or device that does so. My email is not a Google email. Further, 
I have not yet seen any corresponding alert from Google on my end. Please forward the raw email to us so that we may have our forensic expert trace the email tracking information codes therein to verify its origin and the spyware danger it contains. Elana's declaration, in my opinion, is just trying to back up Salts in the fact that he's not trying to come at anyone. He's just trying to get information and he's not accusing anybody of anything as of now. Obviously, we already know that since this whole thing started these attorneys have been at each other have, the, have an exorcism or something at this point but hopefully that changes now that they already had their status conference and we're gonna get to that video eventually i apologize i've been so late about it since this elana declaration video got pretty sizable i am going to leave it here and i'm going to make a part three video with only the natalie k declaration but let me know what do you think about this one video right now and i know this is ot but i still want to know your opinion down in the comment section and if you like this video please don't forget to drop a like go ahead and subscribe to the channel now and ring the bell button so you can get notified every time i post also follow me on my socials they will be down in the description below thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next upload oh,